Hello and welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Dan Costa here with Max Eddy. And we've got a great show for you today. We're going to talk about the top tech news. We're going to bring out one cool thing from the shelves in the lab and answer some of your reader questions. Let's get to the big news of the day. And that is, it doesn't seem like it would be huge news, it's, but it's big news. It's big news. Yahoo is modifying their login process. For years and years, uh, sort of since 2011, you've been able to log into pretty much any Yahoo service with a Facebook, a Facebook login or a Twitter login. Uh, that's going to start to change as Yahoo tries to take the login process back onto their own system. Let's be honest, this could affect tens of users, people out there. It's, it's going to be a huge. Uh, well, we actually well, have no idea what the impact is going I mean, to be. So the first service that they're bringing back in-house is Yahoo Sports Tourney Pick'em, which of course is very timely. March Madness is upon us. We're going to be, everybody's, I'll be making my picks. So this is how, they're, this is going to force a lot of people to remember their Yahoo passwords. And, and what will probably be happening is a lot of people will be using the forgot my password function on yahoo.com. And you know, I'm going to push this into the realm of security. Is this a good thing or not to force people to create another password? And on the one hand, it's not so great because now there's one more unique password that you need. Use a password manager, folks. Uh, LastPass, we love it. On the other hand, you know, having these services where we can use an existing trusted service with one complex password to log into other sites, that's kind of a good thing. It allows other people to provide security without having to roll that out themselves. Yahoo is apparently confident enough that they can do that. We'll have to find out. Yeah, it's also, I would say, it's also going to give rise, these things always do, to a lot of uh, phishing attacks where people are trying to reset Absolutely. passwords. Everybody needs to reset their password now. Um, hackers and thieves know that everybody needs to reset their passwords. There are going to be spam attacks that are targeted just towards those users. I can't wait. Yeah, we will cover it on Security <laughs> Watch here at PCMag.com. Also in the news, uh, Freedom Pop has released a privacy phone. I was out at MWC, saw the black phone, that was very cool. Now Freedom Pop, a low cost carrier, is offering its own version of a super secure phone. It's called the Freedom Pop privacy phone. It's a $189 Samsung Galaxy S2, which is not the latest and greatest, but it's going to secure all of your voice communications, which is pretty nuts. Voice and messaging. They're going to use their VoIP network to uh, sending 128-bit encrypted voice and messaging. And they're going to do all sorts of other stuff, too. They're going to route all your internet data through VPN, which I really like. You'll be able to request a number change as often as you want, which is you can't even do that with Google Voice. It's really great to be able to have that kind of flexibility. And they'll also let you pay with Bitcoin, which is nothing. But th this is cool. Like, not adding security. Nah, not really. Okay. But you know, this is really cool because we had the, this, they're calling this the Snowden phones. We've got the Snowden phone. We've got the Boeing self-destructing security phone. We've got the black phone. We're finally seeing privacy being taken seriously by the people who are making the devices and providing the services. I will say though that you can get a lot of these same functions from different Android apps like Red Phone and Text Secure that will, you know, uh, to secure all of those things. And I'm a little bit skeptical about how well VoIP is really going to perform. Like people might experience some lag and they might say this really isn't worth it to me. But at the same time, this is a really cool idea and I'm really looking forward to seeing yeah. it. Yeah, and if it takes off, I think you're going to start to see carriers offer privacy plans mm -hmm. that at, for a little extra money, with a little extra, a little extra bundled software to help make your communications more secure. I think people will go for it. I hope so. I think people will go for it. And then finally, in the news today, we've been, uh, you know, the Oculus Rift is one of the fa most favorite gadgets we have in the lab. We, um, we always get a lab tour coming in later today. They're going to be t testing it out. We're going to listen to them squeal when they put it on. It's going to be great. But there's always the question. Right now, they're mostly demos. What can you do with an Oculus Rift? Well, this uh, new application just came out. You can actually get a tour of Jerry Seinfeld's apartment. This is not just a tour. It is a fully rendered 3D virtual reality version. Tour, tour is, it pales in comparison to the immersive experience that you the can have. incredible immersive experience that you can finally live out your early 90s comedy television dreams with. I was watching videos of this earlier and people are flipping out being able to walk through a 3D Jerry Seinfeld's apartment. I, I, I've never actually watched Seinfeld much. <laughs> this, is, this is beyond me. But it, it is a cool idea that right now there's a product out there that lets you do this, even if it is like, well, how much did you say the Oculus Rift costs? It's a beta product. So it's, a, you know, it's an immersive experience. You can get a beta kit, a development kit for mm -hmm. 1500 bucks sent to you. But it's not really, I mean, it's a little buggy, not really ready for prime time. But it's a very, very cool demo. And you can watch the videos on PCMag.com without paying $1,500 for a dev kit. Oh, and for all you New Yorkers out there, you will be pleased to know that the creator of Jerry's Place VR discovered that Jerry's bedroom is actually too large to fit within the confines of his actual apartment. So it's not really, uh, not really as bad That's as right. we all thought. This just in, Seinfeld isn't real. Oh, uh, it's a pain. Not real. Let's move on to a reader question. We get, uh, you can remember, send us reader questions via email, on Twitter, on Facebook. This question came in via Twitter um, for our security analyst, Neil Rubenking. He wanted, this reader wanted to know, can we rely on Kaspersky 
the security firm during the current conflict in the Ukraine. Um, We've had this question before. We've had a lot of questions like this before, and we were actually discussing what exactly this question is, uh, what it is, and I, I think the word for it is xenophobic. Yeah. Um, of course you can trust them. Like, Kaspersky is a Russian uh, gentleman, a Russian company, but it is still a company that relies on a global marketplace. They have so much more to lose from colluding with a single government than they do from betraying everyone out there. And just because he's a Russian man and it's a Russian company doesn't mean that they're out to get you. Yeah. I mean, you probably have a lot more to worry about with the NSA spying on you than you do with this particular individual. And we see this kind of question for lots of other East European companies, for Chinese companies. And, and the bottom line is, you know, you should trust the reputation, not the location of the company. Yeah, there's absolutely no evidence to say that there's any cooperation going on whatsoever. The companies, we've been reviewing their products for years and years. We've never seen Decades. anything, we've yeah. never seen anything that other than a pretty solid security product. An absolutely solid and reputation. It, and it's, there's really nothing to be, we hesitate to even report on the story, but uh, we want to reassure you, there's nothing to fear in that company. Uh, let's move on to our gadget of the day, our one cool thing. We test thousands of products every year here in our labs in New York City. Every day we take one thing off the shelf and we show it to you live on the show. Max is actually wearing that cool thing right now, and that's the Garmin Vivo Fit. It's one of a number of great uh, you know, personal activity trackers that's out on the market, but there are a few things that make this one a little bit different. I don't know if you can see, I don't know which way this face is. <laughs> This, this one's a, a nice little device, it's $129 from Garmin, and as you can see across the top here, there's this red line, and that's actually an activity indicator. That means that I've just been sitting on my duff all day, and I really need to get up and do something. But I, I do pay you to sit on your duff all day. It's amazing, it's the best job I've ever had, but this is telling me I need to get up and move. So if you're a, you know, a captain of a uh, fishing boat, and you really need to get up every few hours so you don't get a blood clot, uh, this is what you need. That happens to a lot of people. It happens to a lot of people. So it's $129 for this, but if you pay $160, it comes bundled with this uh, chest strap heart monitor. So you get the whole package right here. It's a, it's kind of a nice device. It's kind of got like a stiff, smooth plastic feel to it, and it'll work with the whole Garmin ecosystem. It it doesn't feel like some of those other ones are kind of like gross on your skin. This one's all right. I like yeah. it. Some of them actually irritate your skin. It's, and have it's to be true. recalled. But uh, you know, it seems a little more driven towards the athletic set. You know, for Definitely. for athletes as opposed to just casual users who want to track how many steps they walk. Right. Which and that it does that. It'll do step tracking. It'll do sleep tracking even. But one of the unique things about it is that it actually is not rechargeable. It uses batteries. So you can just change them out really quick if you are on the go and you really need to keep tracking. You can just swap new batteries into there. So if you're into that kind of thing, batteries, if you uh, like Garmin products and you're looking for a fitness tracker, this one's pretty good. We have a review coming up in a couple of days. Yeah, we're still testing it, but we will have that review up on PCMag.com soon. That has been PC Mag Live. I want to remind you to send us your questions via Facebook, on Twitter, via email. We will answer them live on air. That was our show for today. I invite you to join us tomorrow. We'll do this whole thing all over again, only better. So long.